There are several different ways of creating curves in Softmatch exercise and uh, working with them. So I'll just go through the different ways of creating them and uh, the tools that we have for working with them. So first of all, we can just grab a uh, curve primitive, such as an arc maybe. Uh, whoops, in the wrong view here. So an arc, maybe like that. You can say exactly what angles, uh, it rotated, all that sort of thing. How fine it's going to be refined. We can see how many points are on there. Maybe put them down a little bit. Okay. Similarly, we can go in there and uh, create maybe like a spiral. Again, you have a number of subdivisions, you have your height, you have your start angle and your end angle. Of course, everything here can also be animated. So this is great for actually controlling uh, an animation uh, cycle. And we can also put this up to uh, something like that. And again, if we're not, if we find we don't have quite enough points, we can always just add in points and create it more, make it more accurate. And you can see then in three dimensions, I also have this spiral then that I can use then for animation, for example. So uh, next we have um, a square, quite simply. Whoops, wrong window again. There we go. That's quite simple. A square, linear curve that meets itself. And finally, of course, the circle, which is uh, great again for path animation or that sort of thing, and also for trimming. Anything like that. So you have a certain set of primitives that you can use, but we can also, of course, create uh, curves from scratch. And to do that, we have several different me uh, methods. So first of all, we can create the hole on the outside, which will then generate the NURBS curve on the inside. Or we can actually define the knots where we want the curve to pass through, and it will generate the CVs on the outside. Or we have the linear version, which is basically just connect the dots. And finally, we have a sketch, which allows us to draw something by hand and it'll create the curve from that automatically. At any point while we're drawing uh, curves, let's just get a clean, nice, fresh gummy here. So there we go, we're drawing a curve. We can hit the right mouse button and we'll get a context sensitive menu with all of our uh, curves creation tools, such as for example, now we're go going back to the start and adding some points there. At any point we can use the middle mouse button to add some points in between and maybe refine the curve at some point if we decide we don't like what it's doing. So we'll go in there, or maybe start a new curve right here, and draw on there. Now it's quite important, um, if you're drawing curves, draw them in a counterclockwise way, uh, so that um, you'll have the normals uh, facing the right direction, especially later for um, maybe lofting or something like that. If you forget to, you can always invert a curve simply here. Invert it, or go in later and do that. Right, so we have a couple curves. Created like that. Now let's... Uh, just delete those actually and just go into a couple more things because you'll see that those were the basics for creating a curve from scratch but we can also extract curves from other um, objects so for example let's grab ourselves to uh, or let's grab ourselves a what are we gonna do here a cone maybe so I wish to uh, have a I have a polygon object here or actually let's take a little something more complicated that's a little bit sort of boring there let's get ourselves the character man Okay, zoom in here. Let's maybe like extract a curve from his head. And uh, what we'll do is we'll, okay, we'll just go in here and maybe uh, select an edge loop, something like that. Okay, so we just grab ourselves this edge loop going around. And now I wish to have that as a curve, maybe for lofting purposes, maybe for, um, uh, again, animating whatever I want. So all I can do is just go here and extract from edges. And it's now created a linear curve based on that. And I can also then here define the subdivision level so that it fits onto a subdivision surface, for example. Right, uh, okay, enough of that nonsense. Here, let's get rid of this guy here. There we go. Okay, and let's get a uh, couple NURBS objects because we can use these to uh, generate curves as well. So let's get a sphere. Uh, let's go find it. There we are. And what we'll do is we'll go on here and just say, for example, extract from surface. So what I can now do is extract maybe a curve from the surface and immediately get that. If I want a different one, I can actually pick right on here, whether I'm in U or in V, and I can pick then the exact position I want it at. Um, if I have two overlapping uh, NURBS objects, I can also extract a curve from the exact overlap. So um, intersecting surfaces, there we go. And we now have a curve that's exactly the angle and shape of where these meet. Again, if I'm going to be doing a lofting or something like that, it can be quite useful. Okay, and then the other thing is that we can actually create curves from curves. So maybe uh, if I had this fellow here, 
and I only need a part of that curve. What I can do is I can extract a segment. So I just click, click where I'm going to start. I want the curve boundary and maybe where I'm going to go to until that knot maybe. If I don't like that knot, I can always change it and move it along. So then I've created a new curve based on that one. Also, if I have two curves, maybe uh, we'll just grab another one here and uh, do this. Actually, maybe overlap them even. Okay, so we have two curves that are now meeting. I can now create a fillet intersection between the two right here so that they'll smoothly meet in. And if I need more radius, I can do that. If I move this apart, let's try that again. Go to our... Uh, Oops. Fillet intersection, there we are. Uh, they're not actually intersecting at that point, of course, so that's sort of s silly of me. If I want to change a curve, just simply press M. You can go back, and now you can see the fillet intersections generated here automatically. So again, it's uh, useful then if you want to blend some curves together. Speaking of blending, it's another method we have of uh, generating a curve. And if we have basically two curves that are going to be like this, and we want them to meet, and we need to generate something in the middle. We can either have them snap together, or what we can do is we can go to our um, curve and just do a blend, and we just defined where it's going to meet from where to where, and it will now add in a blend. And we obviously have uh, several controls on how they're going to blend, what they're going to meet, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Next, we have the ability to uh, merge curves, which is basically the snapping them together. And in this case, um, well, we can just select them, and we'll just go to Curve and merge them. Okay, and again, I select Where, and now you'll see what's happening is it's merging; the, it has to merge these points together. But it's taking your continuity into consideration. So if I hit a tangent, and then maybe sort of adjust this to f suit a little bit better my shape, I can then immediately place it right about the way it was before. And of course, I mean, it does have to snap them over, so it is changing the shape a little bit, but it's quite quickly uh, capable of building an entirely new curve out of these two joined together. There we go. So, um, I think that's pretty much everything we have in that menu. Okay, now next we uh, also have a lot of tools for actually working with the curves themselves. Um, You'll find these under Modify, because you're modifying existing curves rather than creating new ones. So we can add points on a curve, maybe by adding a CV somewhere. Again, middle mouse button creates one in the middle, uh, and you can always go into your right mouse button. It's basically the curve creation tool called up again on an existing curve. We can also uh, go in, so, oops, sorry, wrong one, and just add knots, for example. Just grab in there, oops, go in there, maybe add a knot in the middle somewhere. Um, grabbing it, there we go, and just saying exactly where that curve should uh, go through. And of course, we can also just insert knots to refine the curve. So if we want to um, grab one there, and we can also move it about and say exactly where the refinement is, and it will then also add the CVs to make sure that that's correct mathematically. Okay, um, we could also remove knots if we decide we don't like one. That's not a knot we like, we just delete it out. Quite easily done. We can invert our curves. We can open and close them. So if we want a closed curve, again, for maybe for a lofting or something like that, maybe we want to create a path. Um, we can shift it in U, and uh, the other two down here are quite important, especially for if you're creating curves automatically, maybe from a, um, a plotted source or something like that. We can uh, just go in here, and actually, no, I think I'll go to a sketch and maybe make it a really complex little thing here. And if we actually look at the points, okay, it's going to be quite confused. So we can actually go in there and clean up the curve a little bit. Yeah. Just re clean it up a little bit, or we can also reparametrize it. So, just creating a more parametric, simpler uh, shape. There we go. Okay, um, so that's about all for the uh, curve tools. One other one that's worth mentioning is the stitch, which instead of it's much like the merge uh, tool that we saw, but instead of uh, creating a new curve, it just takes your existing curves and keeps two curves but matching them together. So we just go to curve stitch in exactly the same way as we merged them with exactly the same controls, for example, turning it into going into the tangent, changing the range, etc. Um, but it does keep them as two separate curves still. So it's just matching them up. So, I want to generate so another really useful tool for creating curves is actually being able to plot them out. 
so what you'll find a lot is if you have an animation, uh, let's just grab here and just check. And what we have here is an animation whereby the bones are spinning at uh, from 0 to 50 frames. Going, each bone is going around 720 degrees. And if I actually play this back, it's really hard to see exactly what's happening. And also, if you may maybe wanted to use uh, that path for a camera constraint or something like that, uh, it, it'd be pretty difficult to do. So what we can do is we can easily just create a curve out of that. Simply select what you want to, or which path should be plotted. Go to Plot, Curve, and uh, here you have uh, the ability to select how many keyframes, um, or sorry, how many points or CVs will be marked per uh, keyframe and or how many keyframes it will go before it marks the point. So we'll just do one and we don't really need 100 because there's only 50 frames of animation on this. And you see then it actually uh, builds this curve out of the animation. Great for making pretty patterns, uh, sort of reminiscent of the old spirograph things that uh, I'm sure most of us played with as kids. But um, it's also very very useful for seeing exactly in an animation flow uh, where your objects are moving, or being able to take off uh, like an IK, plot it out, and then use that path constraint to blend back and forward between IK and FK, things like that. There's a lot of uh, uses for this.